Welcome to the next episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to take a look at Ethereum's approach to decentralized consensus. Um, these slides were created under the Creative Commons license, uh, and some of the content in these slides is from the Mastering Ethereum GitHub site, which is also under this license. So we're going to take a look at uh, the consensus algorithm that Ethereum is currently using, which is proof of work, and the consensus algorithm that Ethereum is in the process of migrating to, which is proof of stake, and talk a little bit about some of the principles of consensus and what the strengths and weaknesses are of these algorithms. So, um, you know, throughout the uh, various Ethereum lectures I've done, we've talked about consensus rules, the rules that everyone must agree to in order for the system to operate in a decentralized deterministic manner. So in computer science, the term consensus uh, actually predates the concept of the blockchains and is related to the broader problem of synchronizing state in distributed systems. In order that different participants in a distributed system uh, eventually agree on a single system-wide state. Uh, this is called reaching consensus. When it comes to the core fact function of decentralized record keeping and verification, it can become problematic to rely on trust alone to ensure that information derived from state updates is correct. This uh, sort of general challenge is particularly pronounced in decentralized networks because you don't have a central entity as a referee to decide what is true. This lack of a central decision-making entity is one of the main attractions of blockchain platforms because they offer decentralized consensus that has the resulting capacity to resist censorship and has a lack of dependency on any particular central authority for permission to access information. However, these benefits come at a cost. Without a trusted referee or arbitrator, any disagreements, deceptions, or differences need to be reconciled using other means. Consensus algorithms are the mechanism used to reconcile security and decentralization when you don't have a central authority to make those decisions. So in blockchains, consensus is a critical property of the system. You know, there's money at stake. So in the context of blockchain, Consensus is about being able to arrive at a common state while maintaining decentralization. In other words, consensus is intended to produce a system of strict rules without having a centralized ruler. There is no one person, organization, or group in charge. Rather, power and control are diffused across a broad network of participants whose self-interest is served by following the rules and behaving honestly. So this ability to come to consensus across a distributed network under adverse adversarial conditions without having a centralized control person is the core principle of open public blockchains. To address this challenge and maintain the valued property of decentralization, the community continues to experiment with different models of consensus. And there have been a lot of different models of consensus. I'm only gonna talk about two in this uh, lecture, you know, proof of work and proof of stake, but there's been you know, probably 30 to 50 different models of consensus, all of which uh, draw lines in different places. So this lecture is gonna take a look at these two models, proof of work, proof of stake, and their expected impact on smart contract blockchains, such as Ethereum. So while consensus algorithms are an important part of how blockchain works, they're part of the foundational layer of the blockchain, far below uh, the smart contracts. In other words, most of the details of consensus are hidden from the smart contracts. You don't need to know how the consensus works in order to use Ethereum any more than you need to know how routing works to use the internet. So let's talk a little bit about proof of work. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of the original Bitcoin blockchain, invented a consensus algorithm called proof of work. Arguably, proof of work is the most important invention underneath Bitcoin. Uh, the 
the term we normally refer to uh, dealing to Bitcoin's proof of work is mining, which is somewhat of a misunderstanding of the primary purpose of consensus. You know, oftentimes people assume that the purpose of mining is a creation of new currency, just like the purpose of real world mining is the extraction of metals or other resources from the ground. Instead, the real purpose of mining and the other consensus models in the blockchain world is to secure the blockchain while keeping control over the system decentralized and diffused across different participants. Uh, the reward of the newly minted Bitcoins is an incentive to those who contribute to the security of the system, a means to an end. And so in that sense, the Bitcoin reward is a means, and, but decentralized security is why they do it. So in a proof of work consensus, there's also a corresponding punishment, which is uh, the cost of the energy that the miner has to spend to participate in mining. If participants don't follow the rules and earn the reward, they risk the funds they already spent on electricity to mine. Therefore, proof of work consensus is a careful balance of risk and reward that drives participants to behave honestly out of self-interest. So Ethereum is currently a proof of work blockchain in that it uses a proof of work algorithm with the same basic incentive system for the same basic goal, securing the blockchain while, while there's a decentralized control. Ethereum's proof of work algorithm is different than Bitcoin's and it's called uh, ETHash. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit uh, about um, ETHash in a little bit. Um, Ethereum is also, you know, working on, you know, various alternatives, uh, which is primarily proof of stake, which we'll talk about now. So let's talk about consensus with proof of stake. Historically, proof of work was not the first consensus algorithm proposed. Preceding the introduction of proof of work, many researchers have proposed uh, a variety of different consensus algorithms based on financial stake, now called proof of stake or POS. In some respects, proof of work was invented as an alternative to proof of stake. Following the success of Bitcoin, many blockchains have emulated proof of work, including Ethereum. Yet the explosion of research into consensus algorithms has also resurrected proof of stake, significantly advancing the state of the technology. From the beginning, Ethereum's founders were hoping to eventually migrate to consensus its consensus algorithm proof of stake. Um, in fact, uh, they even built into Ethereum's proof of work something called the difficulty bomb, intended to gradually make proof of working mining on Ethereum more and more difficult, essentially forcing the network to transition to proof of stake. Uh, Ethereum is still using proof of work, but uh, they're getting much closer towards launching proof of stake. Uh, Ethereum's planned proof of stake algorithm uh, is called Casper and it's a replacement for ETHash and it's been postponed several times over the past years. Um, but eventually we're going to get there. So in general, a proof of stake algorithm works as follows. The blockchain keeps track of a set of validators and anyone who holds the blockchain's base cryptocurrency, in Ethereum's case, Ether, can become a validator by sending a special type of transaction that locks up their Ether into a deposit. You know, they're staking their Ether. The validators take turns proposing and voting on the next valid block. And the weight of each validator's vote depends on the size of its deposit, the stake. Importantly, a validator risks losing their deposit, uh, which they're, in their theory, they call this loss of the deposit being slashed. If the block they staked it on is rejected by the majority of validators, they could lose their stake. Uh, it would be slashed. Conversely, validators earn a small reward proportional to their deposit stake for every block that is accepted by the majority. Therefore, proof of stake forces the validators to act honestly and follow the consensus rules by a system of reward or punishment. If they do well, they get a small reward. If they do badly, they get a big punishment. The major difference between proof of stake and proof of work is that the punishment in proof of stake is intrinsic to the blockchain i.e. the loss of staked ether. Whereas in proof of work, the punishment is extrinsic, you know, loss of funds spent on electricity if you don't get a corresponding reward. So let's talk a little bit more about ETHash, uh, Ethereum's proof of work algorithm. So ETHash is the Ethereum proof of work algorithm. It uses an evolution 
of the dagger Hashimoto algorithm, which is a combination of those two algorithms. ETH-hash is dependent on the generation and analysis of a large data set known as a directed uh, acyclic graph or simply a DAG. The DAG has an initial size of about one gigabyte and will continue to slowly and linearly grow in size being updated once every epoch or 30,000 blocks or roughly every 125 hours. Uh, the purpose of the directed acyclic graph is to make the ETH-hash proof of work algorithm dependent on maintaining a large frequently asked data structure. This in turn is intended to make the ETH-hash ASIC resistant, which means that it's more difficult to make application specific integrated circuits. Uh, ASICs are uh, special cryptocurrency mining equipment that are far faster than a graphics processing unit, a GPU on a personal computer. Ethereum's founders wanted to avoid uh, having centralization of proof of work mining with specialized mining computers, like what's going on in Bitcoin. Uh, instead, they wanted to ensure that a regular personal computer for GPU would be able to mine Ethereum. You know, nowadays, no one uses uh, PCs for mining Bitcoin. Instead, they use special equipment. And, they, uh, and the founders of Ethereum wanted to avoid that. Um, use of consumer level uh, graphic processing units for carrying out the proof of work on the Ethereum network means that more people around the world can participate in the mining process. The more independent miners uh, there are, the more the decentralized the mining power is, which means we can avoid a situation like Bitcoin, where most of the mining power is concentrated in the hands of a few large industrial mining operations. The downside of the use of GPUs, however, uh, is that it's encouraged a shortage of GPUs in, in the industry because many GPUs are flowing towards Ethereum as opposed to going to other uh, things uh, that GPUs could be used for. Uh, and this can, has led to purchase restrictions and retailers limiting buyers to, you know, a certain amount of GPUs per customer and so on. Um, you know, for a long time, the Ethereum developers targeting a, a proof of stake had kept ASIC miners away from working with Ethereum. Um, however, you know, and as soon as Ethereum moves to proof of stake, ASICs designed for the proof of work algorithm would essentially be rendered useless unless those ASICs can be used to mine other cryptocurrencies instead. How, and that latter possibility of using those ASICs uh, for other cryptocurrencies is a reality, considering that there are other ETH has based consensus coins available, such as Ethereum Classic uh, and, and other currencies as well that are currently proof of work based and are not likely to change to proof of stake anytime soon. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about uh, Ethereum's proof of stake algorithm. So Casper is the proposed name for Ethereum's proof of stake consensus algorithm. Uh, it's still being modified. Uh, there are two important research papers that you could take a look at. And I may have subsequent lectures that dive into each of these. Uh, first one is Casper uh, FFG or Casper the Friendly Finality Gadget. Uh, the second one is Casper CBC, or the friendly ghost correct by construction, uh, CBC being correct by construction. Uh, initially, Casper, the friendly finality gadget, was proposed as a hybrid proof of work, proof of stakes algorithm to be implemented as a transition to a more permanent pure proof of stake algorithm. Um, both Casper FFG and Casper CBC are being developed in, in, uh, in parallel. The main trade-off between the two is that CBC seems to be nicer in theory, but FFG seems to be easier to implement. Um, and there's a lot of information you can find out about Casper on the internet, which I'll be going through in a separate lecture that dives deep into Casper. Uh, let's talk about some of the general principles of consensus. The principles and in assumption of cons assumptions of consensus algorithms can be more clearly understood by asking a few key questions. 
you know, who is in charge of changing the past and how do they do that? You know, and you can think about this, you know, we talk about blockchains being mutable and that no one can change the past. You can also think about from consensus perspective, who can change the future and how. And so you can think of that as sort of like finality. And then what is the cost to make those changes and how decentralized is the power to make those changes and who will know if something has changed? How will we know if a hacker changed the past? So consensus algorithms attempt to answer these questions and they are evolving considerably. And so it's in attempting to answer these questions in very innovative ways. So you might wonder, why do we need lots of different consensus algorithms? You know, I mentioned proof of work and proof of stake, and I've also told you there's, there's lots of other ones. So which uh, consensus algorithm is the best one? Uh, the answer is really a, a question which we don't know the answer to. And that's one of the reasons why it's taken a while for Ethereum to switch from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, it's because they don't really know whether it's going to be better or not. Um, so it all boils down to what is your definition of better, um, which, be, which really comes down to what's your goals, what are the trade-offs, what are the assumptions. Uh, it's likely that no algorithm can optimize everything and will be clearly better for everything. Instead, it's likely that different algorithms will be better for different circumstances. So if someone tells you that one algorithm is better than the other, you should ask them to clarify better at what? Immutability, finality, decentralization, cost. There's no clear answer to these questions. Furthermore, the design of consensus algorithms is at the center of a uh, rapidly evolving and rapidly growing industry that generates tremendous amounts of controversy and heated arguments. In their end, there might not be a correct answer, just as there might be different answers for different applications. You, know, you can think of the blockchain industry as being a giant experiment where these questions are going to be tested under adversarial conditions with enormous monetary value at stake. In the end, we'll know the answer uh, after that answer becomes part of history. So Ethereum's consensus algorithms are still in flux, uh, but it's likely to switch to proof of stake in the very near future. I will have some subsequent lectures where we dive into Casper and talk about proof of stake in a lot more detail. So in summary, this is just a brief lecture to talk about consensus and Ethereum's current proof of work consensus algorithm, which allows miners to validate a candidate block and be rewarded with the work done, and proof of stake, which allows validators to stake a deposit to vote for validity of the information in a candidate block, with the risk that if they uh, incorrectly vote, they can lose their stake. So thanks for watching this uh, short little video on Ethereum decentralized consensus, part of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett.